Call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let a record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code Chapter 551. Uh, please join me while uh, Mr. Hubert leads us in the pledge and the presentations of colors as led by Lieutenant Commander Cortez, Cadet Lieutenant Junior Grade Vanderhurst, Cadet Petty Officer Third Class Landvoet, Cadet Chief Petty Officer Rafiki, Cadet Chief Petty Officer Sterner. Please join me in our pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now our Texas flag. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the city, Texas, Texas, one state, under God, one indivisible. If you would like to, uh, I would just request that you, you bow and join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your grace. Thank you for loving us. Dear God, thank you for uh, all of the hearts of those in this room and uh, their hearts to serve your students. Dear God, we, uh, we just thank you for the Stocktons, for Don and Kara, and what they've meant to this district. We just uh, ask blessings on them. We ask for blessings of this transition. Dear Lord, we, this time of year, we lift up our students, we lift up our educators, we lift up all of those uh, that are in our district, Lord, and I just ask for your protection. Uh, just uh, be with them and let us have a safe end of the year. Uh, dear God, we just praise you and we thank you. And for tonight's meeting, we, we pray pray that you would give us guidance, that you would continue to give us direction uh, to, uh, we know you, you've got all the details worked out, Lord, we just ask that we be instruments of you and that everything that we do, that we glorify you in your name. In your holy name we pray, amen. 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 <laughs> Item 2B, Special District Recognition, Patrons Influencing Education Award. Dr. Stockton. Okay, this time I'll ask Dr. Hines to come and make the presentation. Good evening, President Bush, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. It is an honor and a privilege tonight to present to you as recipient of the Patrons Influencing Education, or the PI Award as we call it, the Assistance League of Montgomery County. And they're with us this evening. Uh, through its generosity, the Assistance League of Montgomery County has provided numerous resources to children attending our schools, as well as schools throughout the entire county that have need. Uh, through their program, Operation School Bell, the chapter provides new clothing for students in need and books for school libraries or literacy libraries. For this school year that is rapidly coming to an end, Operation School Bell provided clothing to 1,760 Conroe ISD students in grades K through 12, spending over $176,000. Each school is given the number of students that they can invite to addressing based on their school's percentage of economically disadvantaged students. Kindergarten through eighth grade students receive $90, and a high school and high school students receive $125 worth of clothing or towards shoes. Students are invited to addressing events at local stores and uh, choose their appropriate clothing. Assistant League members check in students as they arrive and they pay for the clothes as each student checks out. Uh, in last year, in the year 2016 and 17, the Assistance League of Montgomery County dressed a total of 1,935 students and spent over $177,000 through Operation School Bell. The second part of the Operation School Bell program is the Legacy of Literacy program, which has expanded this year. And thus far, the program has provided $2,000 to 10 schools in Conroe Independent School District to buy 
books for school libraries or for the school's literacy libraries. This program has spent close to $20,000 this year. The funds to support these programs comes from the Assistance League Thrift Shop in Conroe, which is located at Metcalf and San Jacinto. I said I was getting a plug for you. It's, a, <laughs> it's one of the top shops around, um, <laughs> as well as donations and grant monies. The total amount of money spent for Conroe ISD students this year is $196,000, which is uh, certainly Amazing. no small amount. And over the last two years, uh, the total is uh, over $373,000. And here this evening, uh, on behalf of the Assistance League of Montgomery County, is President Janet Sheehan. And when, as Ms. Sheehan comes up, please join with me in recognizing this important and caring partner in serving the students of Montgomery County. Dr. Stockton, President Bush, and members of the school board. On behalf of the members of Assistance League of Montgomery County, we are honored to receive this Pi Award. And we are committed to continue serving the students of Conroe Independent School District in Montgomery County. And we do this by giving uh, new clothes to students in need, by giving books to your libraries, and also by awarding scholarships to graduating seniors. Thank you. Thank you. Janet, we want to present you this plaque uh, signifying this pie award, as we like to put it. But uh, I did want to take a minute just to add to what uh, Dr. Hines has said. Uh, if you ever want to start a charity, you need to visit with these ladies mm -hmm. because they know how to do it, okay? <laughs> An unbelievable amount of money is distributed to those that need it in our community, not just our school district, but uh, this is done by 100% volunteers. There is not a paid employee on the staff. And so I just, I commend them for what they have done for children, for what you have done for literacy, for what you've done for Montgomery County. I know there's a lot of people that have helped y'all accomplish it, but it wouldn't have done it, they, they wouldn't have done it if, if y'all didn't spend the time. Okay, the time is what counts, and your heart for children is what is appreciated most tonight. I would also like to ask, we have a number of members present, and first I would ask that if you were a former or current chairman of the Operation School Bell or, or Literacy Program, please stand. And how about giving a special round of applause for those? From meeting on the sixth floor of the Conroe Tower before they had a building and a, and a thrift shop to, to raise money, uh, I, I got a little lesson in that uh, earlier this week from one of the original school bill chairmen to over 370 something thousand dollars given to uh, Conroe ISD uh, the past two years. We just appreciate you and, and, and value your support of our children. And a pie award would not be a pie award. <laughs> without a pie. <laughs> Thank you. Someone can.
come hold my hand for a moment. Oh, Thank you. I'll make sure. If you'll just go that way and visit with everybody. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for all you do. We appreciate you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Godfrey, has anyone registered to address the board? Yes. The next 30 minutes have been designated for public participation by patrons who have signed up to address the board in accordance with board policy BED. Please remember that the board may not discuss or act upon any issues that are not posted on our agenda. The board has adopted complaint policies that are designed to secure at the lowest administrative level a prompt and equitable resolution of complaints and concerns. These policies provide that if a resolution cannot be reached administratively, the person may appeal the administrative decision to the board as a properly posted agenda item. Copies of the district's complaint policies can be found on the district's website. Those who have registered to address the board will be limited to five minutes for their presentation. Delegations of more than five must appoint one representative to present their views. Ms. Godfrey, please call the first person who has signed up to address the board. Dana Anderson. Good evening. Dear ladies and gentlemen of the Conroe ISD board, I stand before you today, sorry I'm going to cry probably, it's a very sensitive subject for me. I stand before you today as a concerned citizen of Montgomery County the grandparent of an autistic child, the grandparent of two children that attend the Conroe ISD School District schools. I am also representing David Sims and his family, which are here this evening. David is an autistic child who attended Bozeman Intermediate School and his family last week. David was removed from his class, arrested, handcuffed and transported to the Montgomery County Juvenile Detention Center without Bozeman Elementary even contacting his parents regarding the incident. David has been constantly bullied at the school without any repercussions to the students that have bullied him. During the incident last week, there were other students involved, yet David was singled out and arrested. David was transported to the juvenile detention center. He was furthermore subjected to embarrassment, harassment, and subjected to a urine test without his parents' knowledge as well. Since David's arrest, his mother has tried to retain his school records from Bozeman Elementary and her request was refused. The secretary of the school stated she could only have his progress reports David's mother has also made a call to the principal of the school and requested information of whether or not all teachers that work with special education students all have special needs training. The principal during this conversation was very rude to David's mother and hung up on her. She got no answers. David's mother has also contacted the Conroe ISD Police Department 
to request a copy of David's arrest record and has been denied. David is a 12 year old minor. He's autistic and a fifth grader in the Conroe ISD school district. This is also very disturbing as David is a minor. I stand in front of you today asking for justice for David. His family would like you, the Board of Conroe ISD, to open a full investigation into this matter and resolve what is broken in this school district. So this never happens to another student again, let alone a special needs autistic child. I would like this matter to be added to the agenda at your next board meeting in June of 2018. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Courtney Brenniger. <clears throat> Hello, good evening. I'm Courtney Brenniger. I'm an architect at Burdick Consultants. We're a land place studio here in the Conroe area. We're actually just down the street on Longmire. And we've been hired by the city of Conroe to do a feasibility study for a new community center for Conroe. It'll be the first official community center for Conroe. And we're, it's very important to us to get public feedback and input for this feasibility study. So we're having an open town hall meeting this Thursday. May 17th from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. at the Oscar Johnson Community Center. That's located at 100 Park Place. Once again, it's this Thursday, 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. It's an open meeting, open to anyone that would like to attend. And it's really important to the city of Conroe to get feedback from the citizens. And there will be a lot of youth-based programs in this facility, so I think it'd be very important to get uh, Connor ISD input on that as well. If you're unable to attend, there's an online survey posted on the City of Conroe website. It's available in both English and Spanish. You can give your feedback in that capacity as well. Uh, we really look forward to your input and I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Christy Swoboda. Take your time. <laughs> Teachers, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm, I'm surrounded by gimpies. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Dr. Stockton, President Bush, and members of the school board, TSTI Conroe is proud to be here tonight to say thank you for your support for the salute to education that we held one week ago tonight, during which we honored the Teacher of the Year Humanitarian of the Year, and Friends of Education for all CISD campuses, and named our district winners, Amy Causey of Conroe High School Ninth and Hannah Januszewski from Runyon Elementary. I hope I got that somewhere close to right. During the ceremony, we recognized Dr. Stockton's service with a large $500 check. <laughs> well, that was non-negotiable, so... <laughs> Tonight we would like that to say that explains it. That explains it. <laughs> we, kind of, we were sneaky that way. You can't pass that way. <laughs> so tonight we were here to say that we're sorry that we gave you uh, a check that you couldn't go cash, and that we had the wrong amount on there. And so if you would come forward, we would like to present you uh, with a check to the Conroe ISD Education Foundation for fifteen hundred dollars. <laughs> We hope that everyone appreciated. She's not finished. That's okay. I'm going to go ahead, um, out of an abundance of transparency, I'm going to go ahead and give this check to Nelda Blair, who's the president 
of the Education Foundation. We hope that everyone enjoyed the new format and we look forward to um, continuing this in the future. Thank you. Ann Stone. Good evening and thank you. First and foremost to Dr. Stockton, President Bush, the Board of Education, all of the administrators and educators within Conroe ISD. First, I want to thank you and salute you for what you do for our students. And I want to thank you for your valuable time this evening. My name is Ann Alexander Stone. Have to keep that maiden name in there. <laughs> and I've lived in Conroe for more than 40 years. My husband, Ed, and I have one son, six amazing grandchildren, and one perfect little great-grandson. <laughs> I represent no group, no committee, or organization as I stand before you. My son is a product of Conroe ISD, and two of my exceptional granddaughters attend Runyon Elementary as straight-A fourth graders. My purpose this evening is to bring light to a social media rumor about Booker T. Washington Junior High School closing before this rumor gets completely out of hand. I don't rely on the rumor mill and I believe wholeheartedly in self-representation along with open and honest dialogue. I didn't attend Booker T. Washington, but I promise you the first day I moved to Conroe, people started telling me about the legacy of Booker T. Washington. Mm -hmm. I was told about the dynamic educators and coaches like Coach Charles Brown and Franzel Reese. Educators like Ben Cavill, NL Archie, Elmer Gibson, Earl Collier, Lucia Bradley, Tommy West, Shirley Brown and Dorothy Reese who instilled a passion for reading in my son that he still thrives on today. Booker T. Washington posts an unparalleled community pride that I haven't seen in any other community. And I'm very excited about the new school that's going to be opening in 2020. And I had the opportunity to speak with Deputy Superintendent Curtis Knoll about what we can expect from this new campus. And I want to personally thank him for enlightening me on all of the great plans that you do have for our school district. But I'm equally excited about the future of Booker T. Washington. And I know that the community that's surrounding the school wants to offer their valuable input as to its future. I've been privileged to attend several Booker T. Washington alumni reunions, and I look forward to attending more. If you could just witness this beautiful event, you would realize how precious the name Booker T. Washington is to this community. And even for a fleeting moment, I wish that I'd been a bulldog. But that didn't last long because I'm proud to be a Trojan from Cold Springs ISD. <laughs> I would just ask you to do one thing in regard to the building, the name, and the legacy. I ask you to please handle it with care. And finally, I want to avail myself to you personally as a source to provide accurate information to the community so that this rumor mill does not get out of hand. I truly believe that everyone here has a vested interest in preserving that legacy, so I'm asking you to utilize me as a source so that Booker T. Washington Bulldog Pride will live on forever. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sherry. Teresa Wagaman. <clears throat> Good.
Good evening, Dr. Stockton, President Bush, and all of the CISD board members. My name is Teresa Wagaman, and I serve as the PTO Programs Chair at the Woodlands High School. And tonight, I wanted to give thanks and praise to our CISD Police Department. So after the shootings that happened in Florida, the Woodlands uh, High School was very concerned because the demographics of our high school and our community were very much like that of the shootings that happened in Parkland, Florida. Parents were concerned, kids were concerned, and luckily we have some excellent principals, Principal Hauser, Principal Colshin, who saw the need and concern and allowed us to put a program together to discuss school safety within our, with our individual school. So we had the luck and fortune to uh, meet Sergeant Blakelock and Chief Harness here at the CISD board meeting, and they quickly went into action and started putting together a great informational safety program for our PTO parents. So on May 1st, we did have our meeting, and we had a great turnout. And I just wanted to give you just a little overview of what they talked about and how informative and important it was for each parent to understand how trained and skilled our police department really is. Now, of course, many of you probably think or see our police officers riding around in their go-karts or directing traffic. <laughs> that is not even close to what they do and the training that they have gone through in order to be the outstanding department that they are. So um, I just wanted to let you know, Chief Harness gave us a great overview. And his 41 years of police service, 20 with Houston, 21 with us, that is an incredible legacy, an incredible resource, not only for his entire staff, but every officer that comes in with him. Um, and then Chief Bla uh, Chief Blaylock. Sorry, I just I just gave you a new title. <laughs> <laughs> Sergeant Blakelock <laughs> came in and gave us a great overview of the amount of training that each one of our officers go through. Many don't realize not only are they trained in just you know basic policing skills, but they go above and beyond in multiple levels of training, not only in mental health, but identifying students that may be in trouble. I mean, it is, it is absolutely amazing what they do, and they should be commended on a daily basis. And then lastly, Sergeant Thompson came in and gave us information on cybersecurity for our own kids. And the one thing that I will tell you that we all need to remind ourselves is that we as parents and the payers of those cell phones, <laughs> it is our daily responsibility to check their apps, to check their texts, to find out what is going on in that little hidden world, uh, in that little hidden device. Each one of us needs to get in there, and if they push back, the Wi-Fi goes off. <laughs> That's it. But I just wanted to, um, again, say thank you so much to the CISD Police Department for their participation, their eagerness to come out to our school, and their eagerness to come out to any school that is interested in having this kind of program. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Item 5A, named Principal of Hawk Academic Alternative High School. Dr. Okay, at, at this time, I'm going to ask Dr. Null to come make his uh, recommendation to the board. Well, good evening, President Bush, members of the board. Uh, it is certainly a privilege to uh, be here tonight to make my first recommendation as principal to you. Uh, after having watched Dr. Stockton do this for many years uh, and, and hear him say repeatedly, um, how serious he takes this opportunity and knows that it's really the most important uh, job that he had as superintendent. So uh, it is a privilege to be here tonight. And uh, for Hawk High School, Hawk is a gem in our school district. And I know that you've all had an opportunity to visit Hawk High School. We have many of our teachers here tonight from Hawk. It is a special place and it changes lives, not only of the children that attend, but I think it changes generations of lives in the work that they do at Hawk. And because of that, they deserve a dynamic leader. Uh, they deserve a leader that 
loves children, uh, has a special interest in, in children that may be at risk and finding a way to help them be successful. And I'm proud to say that I've witnessed that in our, in our candidate tonight, uh, having spent years working alongside Dr. John Williams, I can tell you that he is a fine man that has a great heart for children, and I know that he will lead that campus with pride and with dignity and will do us all proud. So it's an honor tonight to recommend uh, Dr. John Williams as the next principal of Hawk High School. We have to make a motion. Vote. We have to make a motion. I will have motion of <laughs> Madam, <laughs> Madam President. <laughs> I know it's your last meeting, but we're just going to kind of keep the same, sort of spare the same routine. <laughs> Madam President, like I would move that we select Dr. John Williams as the principal of Hawk Academic High School. Second. Second. All those in favor? All right. No. No. You know, when he said my name, it looked like everyone was going to cut and run. On me. <laughs> kind of John, I'll just interrupt you. I was so excited to hear your name. I just couldn't handle it. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, the President, uh, President Bush, members of the board, Dr. Stockton and Dr. No, uh, thank you all for the opportunity to serve as principal of Hawk High School. Um, I'm truly humbled. Uh, by your confidence that you've placed in me, and I will endeavor to continue building on the progress and the success that's already been made by Ms. Nicolini and those who came before me. As I stand here, I recognize just how blessed I am to have such a great and amazing support group. And uh, I have to start out by uh, recognizing my own family, and I'll ask my wife and my daughters to stand. Um, First, first to my wife, uh, who's my partner and my best friend, um, she has always been my strength and my inspiration uh, to keep me moving forward. Uh, and as for my two fearless daughters, uh, <laughs> my gosh, they're just, uh, they've, uh, they've brought so much excitement into our household, you know. I have to, I, I have to say this, that uh, you know, when when uh, when God gave me the second daughter, I looked up and go, "Are you really? Are you serious?" <laughs> you know, and uh, I could not have been more surprised as they grew up. And I found that I have learned more about being a man and a father and a leader from them than I've been able to teach them in any way. Uh, so I am so proud of them. They're both graduates of Conroe High School, so they're products of our, our school district. And uh, again, they've taught me so much just watching them grow up. But lastly, to my friends, my co-workers, my extended family, and for all those other people that believed in me, thank you so much for adding so much sunshine to my life. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Okay. Uh, as principals of Hawk, I pledge to commit my efforts to giving the students purpose, faith in their abilities, and a desire to succeed. Uh, after all, the students of Hawk deserve nothing less. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The uh, second item of uh, naming the tonight, naming the assistant superintendent of secondary education. 
thank you once again. As we just saw a perfect example, we have outstanding principals in Conroe ISD. Um, they truly are gifted educators and they're great leaders. And they require great leadership. When we place someone in a position to lead our principals every day, um, it, it requires a special person that has special talent. And I'm proud tonight to bring forward as a recommendation um, the right man to lead our secondary principals into the future. Uh, Mr. Greg Colshan has spent the last 16 years at uh, the Woodlands High School, and he has taken what was already a great school and made it even better. And just, you see Mr. Colshan often uh, in this room as he comes to um, present his students that have done outstanding things under his guidance um, and teachers. And uh, he always makes us proud. He is one of the most visible um, people in Connor ISD. He is everywhere um, at all times. And I'm sure that uh, Sandra and his family will be happy to have him home maybe a little more as we, oh. keep, him, uh, we keep him in town a little more and, and not traveling to watch uh, the Highlanders as they uh, go about their daily business. But um, the other thing that Greg has to his credit uh, that I'm going to be relying on is he's the one guy that's had to follow Dr. Stockton in Connor ISD. So <laughs> Greg, I'm going to be asking you a lot of advice on how that, how that works. Um, uh, actually, uh, my second year teaching had an opportunity uh, to be a teacher at the Woodlands High School under Greg Colshan's leadership. So I, uh, or I'm sorry, my third year teaching. And so I had an opportunity for a year to watch him make that transition and see him every day the way he loves uh, children, he loves the staff, and I know that he will uh, help guide our principals to do the same thing every day. So my recommendation for assistant superintendent for secondary education is Mr. Greg Colshan. Madam. All right. Do I have a motion? I move that we approve the promotion as presented. I second. <laughs> oh, no, you, go. you go ahead. That's fine. We'll, we'll we we'll both second it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All those in favor. Congratulations, Mr. Colshan. <laughs> President Bush, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, uh, Thank you for another wonderful opportunity as I move forward in my career. Um, this wouldn't have been possible without the help of a whole lot of people along the way. Uh, first and foremost, that guy sitting over there 16 years ago uh, put a lot of faith in a relatively inexperienced uh, high school principal who came from a school nothing like the Woodlands High School. Um, so thank you, Dr. Stockton, for the opportunity. Um, the last uh, 16 years have been full of uh, a lot of wonderful opportunities for myself and my family. I, I consider myself very blessed to have worked with some great uh, assistant principals, counselors, teachers, and support staff. Um, working together, we, we've had great things happen at our high school. Uh, a lot of that is, can also be attributed to the support we get from our, our parents. Uh, it, tonight we have a couple of former PTO uh, people in the, in the audience who are here for Dr. Stockton, but it was just uh, reminiscent. <laughs> Someday, maybe. You know. uh, of the support that we get and a lot of the success that we've had. Um, I also want to uh, thank my family uh, for indulging me all these years to be able to do what I love to do. Um, my wife, Sandra. If you would stand. Mm -hmm. My son David and his wife Candace. Mm -hmm. My son Michael and his wife Lena. Mm -hmm. And four perfect grandchildren, Austin, <laughs> Hunter, <laughs> Amelia, and Briley. As you can see, I have a vested interest in, in CISD and the education that our children get. <laughs> and I would be remiss not to mention uh, little Greg, or Drake, who is due in September. Uh, so we're excited about that. 
Um, in closing, Dr. Knoll, thank you for uh, believing in me and giving me the opportunity uh, for this next step. Appreciate that. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is a consent agenda. I've had a request to remove items E and F. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda minus these two items? Motion to approve minus items E and F. The consent agenda is presented. I second. All right. All those in favor? Item 6E, consider approval of Stanberry Uniforms, Inc. for the purchase of marching band and concert uniforms and authorize superintendent to negotiate and execute all documents necessary to the purchases. Dr. Stockton. Hey, Darren Rice, I'll turn it to you. Yes, good evening, President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. Tonight I'm here to recommend the Board of Trustees approve the selection of Stansbury Uniforms, Inc. for an estimated expenditure of $450,000. Stansbury Uniforms, Inc. manufactures uniforms and performance apparel for marching bands, drum corps, and concert performance groups throughout the United States. The uniforms associated with this purchase are associated with the life cycle schedule established by the Finance Department, as well as for Grand Oaks High School. The, po the programs receiving uniforms during the cycle are Conroe High School Band Orchestra, the Oak Ridge High School Choir and Orchestra, Kenny Creek Orchestra, the Woodlands High School Orchestra, and uh, the funding will come out of the general fund. And at this time, I recommend your approval. So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I think the only comment, I was one of the ones that asked that we uh, take this item off the of consent agenda, really just to be transparent because it's a large dollar figure. But also, I think uh, I, I wanted to, to give my own support, and I believe every board member would, for the fine arts programs that we're talking about. We have some of the most outstanding fine arts programs in the state of Texas, as uh, recently we've received some rewards for and awards for, and I just want to commend everyone that's involved in that. We thank you for all your hard work and your effort. It's greatly appreciated. All right. All those in favor? Motion passes. Thank you. Item uh, 6F, consider approval of Paxton Patterson LLC for the purchase of junior high school technology and human services labs and authorize superintendent to negotiate and execute all documents necessary. Yes, tonight I'm recommending the Board of Trustees approve the selection of Paxton Patterson LLC for an estimated annual expenditure of $490,000. Paxton Patterson LLC offers learning systems, tools, and instructional supplies that provide best value support to the district's technology and engineering programs and align more efficient, efficiently with TEEK's objectives. Their products allow for small group instruction and individualized instructions that allow teachers to assist those skills that are more difficult to grasp in a small group setting while other students can continue. These labs will be in, implemented in all seven junior high schools in the district. And at this time, I recommend your approval. All right. Do I have a motion? So move that we approve as presented. Second. All right. Any discussion? I believe the reason for pulling this was the same, transparency. And as I read through and understand, too, this is a change in vendor from what we've done in the past. Yes. Sir. And I know there's an extensive purchasing uh, group that goes through these vendors and recognizes that. Mm -hmm. But I think we're kind of stepping up our game, so to speak. I would, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but we're, <laughs> we're getting a little bit better product and service for our for yes, dollars, this, uh, as I understand it. Yes, this I product. I to confirm that. I, yes, I, I see, yes, you, yeah, you're, I, I see the shaking. Yeah, the, Mr. Uh, Ship's back there shaking his head. Mr. Ship's back there shaking his head. <laughs> <laughs> head. I want to go ahead and yeah. confirm now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they they did an extensive study. Uh, the, the the product that we that we currently have now was not meeting the, the needs that we had. They were actually shifting products. Okay. We did not like the the way that they were going. So this new product aligns us better with our teeth. Mr. Programs. Ship, would, is there something you'd like to add? I'd, so we'll give you the opportunity. I saw you back there shaking your head. <laughs> <laughs> I know you care a lot about I these do. programs. Uh, I do, sir. And Madam President, honored board members, Dr. Stockton, 
Um, we spent a great deal of time looking at these products and what we sought was a product that we had confidence in that would provide the kind of quality instructional experience that our students deserve. And after a year-long uh, search, uh, looking at both vendors, we found that Paxton Patterson was able to provide exactly what we expect from a vendor, whereas the other vendor did not provide what we anticipated. So, Thank you. other questions? That's good. That's exciting. Thank Wonderful. You. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. All those in favor? <clears throat> Thank you. Item 7A, Receive Capital Improvement Update. Dr. Stockton. Okay, Mr. Foster, if you'll come and present that information. Good evening, President Bush, and members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. It's my pleasure to bring forward you an update on our capital improvements we have underway throughout the district. I'm going to start with Grand Oaks High School. Grand Oaks is scheduled to open in August of 2018, so it's just right around the corner. As you can see from our overhead picture here, the, the site, the building, things are wrapping up uh, very quickly. Things are cleaning up nicely. You can see the landscape and things of that nature on the outside taking shape now. <clears throat> Looking across the front of that building, you can really start to see some of the details come together. On the inside, uh, we've been rapidly finishing those details, setting up furniture in classrooms, doing punch lists, getting things together. Uh, we're scheduled to take over possession of that building for our use in July. I mean, so it is on schedule and proceeding just as we would like. At Catherine Johnson Clark Intermediate School, this one is also scheduled to open in August of 2018, which is just right around the corner. Opens up right alongside of Grand Oaks High School. Uh, for the last uh, couple of board meetings, we've been focused on the details coming in around the front door, and this is just a good a representation of the progress we've made there. On the inside of this building, it is also uh, approaching the finish rapidly. So you can see here, we're looking at one of the fine arts classrooms before the floor is being installed. But as you move down the hallways, you're starting to see the colors, the life, the personality of that building come together. Like I said, it is scheduled to open in August. We're gonna take possession of that building for our use in July, just as we had anticipated. Our life cycle project for 2018, uh, where our current focus is at our natatorium, where we've been upgrading or replacing at the end of their useful life, the air conditioning systems that supply the comfort inside that uh, facility. You can see here from the outside, that's all new ductwork coming on the outside of the building. So it's a really neat sight to see those things arrive on trucks as they run down the freeway. But the equipment is being installed, things of that nature are being wired up. Uh, we're running, we'll be rapidly approaching the startup process for those units. And we hope to have that building back online on schedule, uh, or it is currently on schedule. We have that building back online at uh, the beginning of June. Also as part of that life cycle work is uh, a re-roofing of Glenlock Elementary. So this is a look at that progress. That pro project is moving along just as we would hoped it would. Uh, the good weather we've, incurred, we've encountered over the last several weeks has been working to our benefit. And as we move forward with that project, we'll move on to other projects throughout the summer. And before this project is done, we will have touched 31 campuses in some form or fashion. But I'll bring you updates on what we're doing next month uh, at our next uh, board meeting. Now our stadium school board replacement, so at Wood Forest Stadium, you're seeing the structure is complete. Uh, they're working through weld inspections and all the windstorm certifications, all the kind of things we gotta do to make sure it stands up to the forces of nature. Next week, they begin installing the, uh, the actual school board components at Wood Forest, so that project is moving along just as we had hoped it would and is uh, uh, approaching uh, nearing completion on schedule. Now at Moorhead Stadium, the schedule erecting, the, the crews erecting the structure have moved on to Moorhead Stadium, so now they're installing the foundations and the new structure for the school board replacement at Moorhead as well. Like I said, that project is on schedule, so the school board installation happens about two weeks after Wood Forest, and so we'll take possession of those and have our training at the end of June, just as we planned. Our safety and security project, which we approved at the board meeting about two board meetings ago, we've been working through paperwork and approvals and contracts and bonds, uh, that process is is done. We received the contract back from the uh, from the contractor this week, so they're being executed. And while they've been waiting on the paperwork transmissions, we've uh, gotten approvals and start beginning to place orders for the cameras and the other equipment that we need in advance of that work to be to happen. It is still on schedule, and uh, most of the work happens above the ceiling. So it is. Uh, I'll bring you an update with a, no more pictures next month, uh, but uh, bring you the progress for that project. Flex 19, uh, which is uh, scheduled to open in August of 2019. The building pad for that building is complete. So we'll start uh, the foundation construction uh, over the next 
several days. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're working on the, on the building, moving away from the building with underground utilities, things of that nature, and it is on schedule, uh, as I mentioned. <coughs> At Austin Elementary, which is an addition renovation project, which is a, basically a reorganization of that campus to help improve traffic patterns and, and the overall form and function of that campus, uh, we've been working through the phase, uh, the first phase of that work. So you've seen the detention pond where all of our drainage goes. You're looking at the new parking lots that are being uh, built around that structure, which will help us facilitate the building that we're going to have to build uh, in order to make that project complete. Uh, the parking lots have been moving along just as we have scheduled, again, making good use of the good weather we've had here recently. And then we're moving that project along on schedule, and it's, we're scheduled to be there through August of 2019. At Irons Junior High, where we're doing a classroom addition, uh, we've, the foundations are in, the slab is poured, and we're ready to erect the structural steel. So the structural steel arrives on Monday next week, and so it'll begin going vertical on Tuesday, and that project is on schedule and is scheduled to turn over uh, during the winter break this coming December. Our new junior high school, which is out behind uh, Bosman Intermediate, uh, we have been able to mobilize on that site and begin in earnest the, uh, the clearing effort for the new building, new parking lots, and all the other uh, things that go along with the junior high school. So that project is on schedule. It's scheduled to open, as we heard earlier tonight, in August of 2020. Conroe High School, where we've got a building addition that is facilitating a major renovation of the mechanical systems in the main building. That project is on schedule. Again, the building addition is scheduled to turn over in December for the winter break, so we'll have it for the spring semester. As you can see here from the exterior of that building, it is uh, closing up nicely. On the interior, you can see the uh, another section. This is the upstairs section where you can see get an idea of where the natural sunlight is going to come into the core of that building for us. The exterior windows were probably just a few weeks from being in a dry condition on that building, uh, so it is proceed proceeding nicely. And uh, this summer, we'll bring you plans on the updates as we get into the main building and work through the areas that we can work on while this building is still under construction as well. And that is our update. Thank you, Mr. Foster. <laughs> Item 8A, receive financial reports. Dr. Stockton. Darren Rice, if you'll come please present that report. Once again, good evening, President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. Tonight I'm here to present the financial statements for the district for the month of April. These statements will include our general fund, debt service, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. The first statement we're going to look at this evening is our balance sheet for the month. Our balance sheet includes our assets, our liabilities, and our fund balances. And each month we like to look at our cash and investments and see how we're doing there. We'll concentrate once again on the general fund. Uh, we currently have cash on hand of $500. We have deposits in the bank of $959,000. We have investments with our state pools of $155 million. We have short-term investments, that's investments of less than one year, of $89 million. And our longer-term investments with TCG Investment Advisors of $51.6 million for total cash and investments of $297 million. Always like to track our property tax collections. And as you can see, we're just slightly behind where we, where we were last year, but we feel very confident we're going to reach our goal of 100% as we do each year. The next statement we're going to look at this evening is our income statement. Our income statement includes our revenues and expenditures for the district. Revenues are broken down into three categories. That's local and intermediate sources, state program revenues, and federal program revenues. And we can look at the detail of our local and intermediate sources. And as you can see, property taxes is the largest generator of revenues in our general fund and debt service fund. In uh, food service, it's food sales. And in self-funded insurance, it's premium contributions. We can also look at our expenditures uh, year to date by major category for each of the funds. This is a projection of our fund balance at uh, 831 of 2018. We're projected an increase of about $1.6 million uh, to $135.9 million. Uh, child nutrition is ex inspected to uh, increase by roughly $800,000. This is our 2015 bond referendum status update. We've currently expended and encumbered 
$460 million of our bond referendum. We have an estimate to complete of about another $65.5 million. That given us a total project <coughs> forecast of $525.5 million, leaving us with about $2.9 million worth of contingency. Self-insurance fund, uh, month of April, once again, we had a, we had a pretty much a break-even month. Um, for the year, we've had total revenues of $32 million. We've had total expenses of $28.3 million, giving us revenues over expenses of roughly $3.7 million. And participation in our wellness centers have still been strong. They've still been strong. The, um, I would just give you an update um, for May. We've had some very high claims come in. We've had a, a, a few preemie babies and a couple other things. So we're going to see a, a different story for, for May, but, but hopefully the progress we've made so far will cover those. Investments for the month, par value of our portfolio at the end of April was $612 million. Uh, the pools are earning 1.94%. Our shorter term investments, once again, less than a year, 1.81%. Our longer term investments with TCG Investment Advisors, 1.46%, uh, leaving us with a combined portfolio that has a WAM of 88 days and a yield of 1.88%. And our benchmark, which is the 90-day T-bill, is at 1.78%. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Item 9A is a special district recognition service to Conroe ISD, Dr. Stockton, <clears throat> Superintendent. I asked for this item to be uh, placed on the agenda, and I wanted to give our former board members and any current board members an opportunity to thank Dr. Stockton for his service. So whoever of the former board would like to go first, I'm looking to y'all and y'all have your time. <laughs> President Bush, uh, Board of Trustees, first of all, would like to thank you for giving us all this um, opportunity to um, share what a difference Dr. Stockton has made. So Dr. Stockton, wow. <laughs> Where to begin, but from the beginning. I've had uh, the honor of knowing uh, you for many, many years in different capacities, but you always know um, when you meet someone of the highest integrity, uh, strong moral character, and someone who's respectful to everyone. You just, you know that, and you are that person. Fifteen years ago, our district was facing challenges, <laughs> and our board was very committed, and we're here this evening, to create a district that would embrace every child, that all schools are important, that would have great leadership from the top down, and would have, of course, a strong financial base. And you made this happen. In fact, not only is CISD one of the premier districts in our county, but in our state, and I would say probably in our great country. You've received many, many awards and accolades. Um, you know, the list is um, unparalleled to anyone. But to me, the biggest award that you've received is that you've made such a difference in thousands of students' lives in so many, many capacities. Your parents would be very, very proud of you, Dr. Stockton. So there was a sentiment that 15 years ago was um, in um, many of our schools and also um, in our students. And it's a poem that uh, have used a number of times. And um, my parents think I'm average. My teachers think so too. I wish I didn't know this because there's lots I'd like to do. I'd like to build a rocket. I have a book that tells me how. But since I found I'm average, no use in trying now. Well, Dr. Stockton, you changed this. Our students graduate with not only competence, but with confidence. And for that, we are very grateful. 
Your legacy is all means all, it's all of our schools. I would send my child to any school in CISD. We have a very sound financial base, but it takes a great leader to make this happen. So from all the children whose lives you've impacted, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And Mrs. Stockton, Kara, thank you for sharing uh, your wonderful husband with us for all these years. We will miss you. Thank you. <laughs> President Bush, board members, I too would like to express some thoughts. Don, you've heard part of this story before. I've even introduced you at uh, meetings with this story. You haven't heard the second part of it, though. <laughs> uh, when, I came, when I filed for election, we had a superintendent, we had a fiscal officer, we had no lawsuits, and no one was questioning how, I spent, how we spent our money. By the time I got elected, we had no superintendent, we had no fiscal officer, we had two lawsuits, and people were questioning the bond money. We needed a leader. In fact, my group, C.J. Haynes, Bruce Tuff, and I, were sworn in a month early so that we could get started on a superintendent search. We had a search committee, a search company, that came and they brought a number of people before us, none of which met our standard. Somebody raised the question, well, what about our interim superintendent, Dr. Stockton? I said, no. <laughs> He had an opportunity to apply, and he's quoted in the paper that's saying he's not ready. I took him at his word. <laughs> then, as we moved along in the search, Don began to address issues, issues that would be easy for an interim to just take notes and wait till the he or her, him or her, who came, who, whoever came aboard and give them the information and let them address it. Don didn't do that. Because of that leadership he exhibited as an interim, I changed my mind. I proudly voted for Dr. Stockton. Second part of this story, you've heard all that, Don. Second part of this story, the best decision I ever made as a school board member was changing my mind. That charted, because we did hire Dr. Stockton, that charted us for the future and has laid out a path so that we can be the best school district in the nation. Thank you, Dr. Stockton. I would like to. <clears throat> I would like to thank uh, President Bush, and um, all of the board members and Dr. Stockton, for the opportunity to um, have the, the honor and the privilege to say thank you for um, my personal thank you and professional gratitude for <clears throat> all that you've done for your outstanding leadership um, that you have exhibited and provided for the district, for the students, for the teachers, for the counselors, for the staff, for the board members, and um, the, all the administrators. And Dr. Stockton has served in every capacity that he has been in in this school district as a man of integrity and quality. I exhibited that when, uh, I mean, I watched him exhibit that when he was at Oak Ridge when he was at Knox, um, and when he was at the administration building, when he was at Woodlands High School. And um, I also saw the person that I think probably was instrumental, who became a friend of mine, and I'm not sure who I knew first, if it was Earl Stockton or Don Stockton, but your dad was a man of quality and integrity also. And, uh, <clears throat> um, 
But not only did he have um, the quality and integrity and honesty leadership, Don Stockton has what I call that Barnabas character. He has the ability to look at people and see not only where they are, what they're doing, but he sees their potential. Mm -hmm. And it can be with students, it can be with teachers, it can be with administrators. And what he does is he encourages them and uh, encourages them to strive and to reach out for things, sometimes the potential that they don't even know they have. And that's a rare quality, but if you can find a leader who has that quality and who is in charge of an educational system where young minds are ready to be formed, where teachers can be encouraged to be creative, where, where board members can reach out, it just sets up a dynamic paradigm. And I thank you for the service that you have done and all of those great qualities that you've done. And, but one thing as a board member, what was really reassuring to me is Don was a person that, because um, as a board member, you want to be connected with the people in the district in all levels, from the janitor to the deputy superintendent. But he was always a person that I could reach out to and I could trust his honesty and his opinions because he would give me honest opinions. We didn't always agree, but that was wonderful because then we're, you know, I needed to expand my thoughts or opinions on something. You know, Don was there. And it's really comforting when you're a school board member, when you're the president of the board, when you're a parent, when you need to talk to a parent or to a student, he could give me advice on how to direct them to where they could get their problems solved. That's such a great quality. And um, as um, I was strolling down memory lane today, thinking of all of the experiences with CISD, I thought of all of the the building expansions and the education and how you were instrumental in reviving our curriculum, well, revitalizing our curriculum so that it was really a rich curriculum, curriculum which touched all of the learning aspects, which is resulting, as we can see in our students today, and their capabilities and how they succeed everywhere. And uh, again, he knows the right people to pick and how to encourage them, and so, um, I hope you have a enjoyable retirement and a blessed life. And thank you, Mrs. Stockton, for, <laughs> as Ann said, sharing your wonderful husband with us and with the board and all the students. We appreciate that. And I wish you the very best. And thank you, for it. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. President Bush, board, thank you very much for letting us have this opportunity. Um, I know Don's a little worried. Um, <laughs> Don and I have known each other a very long, long time. time. <laughs> Starting back as um, a parent when he was uh, new to Conroe Independent School District. And I just wanted to get in here before Bruce does. <laughs> I'm, I'm worried a little bit. Uh, seriously, Don, I um, ran across something in my reading this week, and um, you had my heart uh, when the Read for a Better Life came on board, um, and I know that um, that's been a powerful, powerful program, and I thank you for that. But I read something that I thought, this, this is Don, this is Don Stockton. Power comes from values, from beliefs from purpose, from within. You have been guided by your values, your beliefs, your purpose, all that's been within you. And I am most appreciative of what you have given to this district. You have left a powerful and lasting legacy in our district. I am most, if I had to pick two things 
that I would say thank you for most of all. One would be your integrity. I never had to question your integrity. And your dedication to all means all. Uh, I said to Kara earlier, now she and Brooke get him and take, can take him on vacations where he can stay longer than three or four days and he won't have his phone. So enjoy every minute of your retirement. You are very much appreciated. Thank you, Linda. I'm going to get up because most of the people that will speak tonight as former board members are long timers and, and I was a very short timer on the board. And when I came to, to become involved with the Conroe Independent School District, it was under a prior superintendent and there was a lot of stress and strain and, and, in, and in contrast and in discussing the movements and the changes in leadership, I, I recall that I was working on a bond program. I think I've done five of those. I think I've graduated now. <laughs> but during, during the bond, one of the bond program meetings, the, the superintendent at that time met with me privately and uh, let me know that he had never been invited to a Super Bowl. And I remember thinking, well, neither have I, but, <laughs> but what a wildly inappropriate thing to say. <laughs> and for, for everyone who has talked about Don Stockton's integrity, it is impeccable. It is unimpeachable. And, and Don told me tonight something I, I, have, I would say I have short-term memory loss. I'm old and I have all kinds of memory loss. Don told me that during this first bond election meeting on the, on the bond committee, that I looked at him and said, you need to be our next superintendent. I don't remember that because I'm, us because I'm usually not that good a judge of character. <laughs> but assuming I said that, I had no idea how incredible and extraordinary a job you would do. You know, we, we like to look back at the statistical growth of our district, how we've got so many more kids and so many more campuses and yet we've kept our, our taxes as low as possible, how our academic scores have improved every year and how we are now one of the top academic districts in the nation, certainly in the state. How we not only have great academics, but we have low costs and we have complete transparency. It's, it, it's, a, it's a triple play. It's a triple crown. It's everything you can think of. There, there are no districts that can compare to what we have done during Don Stockton's tenure. But the most impressive thing that has happened under Don Stockton's leadership has to do with the spirit the leader brings. And it's easy when you're, when you're the top guy to carry a little pocket knife with you so you can cut the tendons of the people who might be coming after you and trying to take your place or get your job. And what Don has created is an absolute magnet for extraordinary people to seize opportunities and to invest themselves in our district. And we've seen that with Dr. Null Who's, who's going to take over and lead us forward. But, but, and we've seen that with Mr. Brown, who's gonna help take over Hawk, and Hawk is a great place. I, I will tell you, until you're on the school board, you really never, I'm sorry, uh, will never get, to, never get to know how great Hawk is. But, 
you don't keep people like Curtis Knoll, you don't keep, keep people like Chris Hines if they don't think there's a future. And Don Stockton has caused people who want to be a part of this and to grow it to come to this district instead of other districts and has caused teachers to want to come to this district instead of other districts. And so I thank you for the real leadership skills that you have brought to our district, the openness and the transparency, and the ability to make this a place where the best want to come. Thank you. Board, Dr. Stockton. I'm going to keep this very brief, but it was it was not only a pleasure to serve with you, but I want this board and the community to know that in this day and age of of crudeness and of lack of civility, that Dr. Stockton is a man that you could sit down and have a talk with and disagree with, and he treated you with the utmost charity, the utmost dignity, and he always made you feel like you mattered. I have the, uh, the great privilege to have three children in this school district, and to have a man like you serve as their superintendent has been a pleasure, and, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart and my family thanks you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak. Why are they all nervous, Bruce? They are. <laughs> they are. So I'll. Uh, so you know, it was a different time when I came on the board. I did not know Don Stockton, and uh, the the news during the election just got worse and worse. So by the time Mel and CJ and I were sworn in, uh, the wheels have come off the school bus. It was <laughs> it was crazy. In fact, Darren Rice has given that report. When he gave the report to me for the first meeting, we wouldn't even approve the payment of the bills. So he had no bills to be approved. We had a split vote. Uh, every issue we had during that first year was very controversial. And we were very divided, uh, very fractured board. The meetings last oh, till midnight or longer. This room was filled, um, 75 people lined up to speak and Melanie said 30 minutes I mean they they were outraged that we didn't give them three hours so it was uh, marathon meetings and then in the executive session it was even worse and Don was the interim during the whole time and uh, it was and Carrie was their experience in this so um, it was a time for me to really experience and understand true leadership and to watch Don and I'm interviewing these other superintendent candidates and I went, there's no way I'm hiring one of them. And uh, I approached Don about the superintendent position. He already announced, no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, he was um, actually, I think, in his head, resigned to the fact that he wasn't going to continue with the district. But uh, we, were, we were fortunate enough to um, encourage him to present himself to the board. And uh, he was um, selected. And that is really the proudest moment of my public career and contribution is hiring Don Stockton. I can look back on that and say there is nothing else I have done that has a greater impact than that. And that is uh, one of the uh, proudest accomplishments that I can say that I did. And, and after that, you know, the wheels came back on the school bus. Things started getting resolved. Uh, I still was causing as many issues as possible. I started a, <laughs> an audit committee. I remember hiring Teresa Carpenter, I said, Teresa, when you find the smoking gun, you don't call Ann Snyder, you don't call Don Stockton, you call me. And that's during the construction of College Park High School. So, I mean, even that was controversial. We call it College Park High School, the natatorium, the stadium, everything was uh, a constant issue. And it was kind of a carryover from what happened. We lost the superintendent, uh, the previous superintendent. But one of the, uh, one of the other uh, one of the learning lessons that I learned from Don is observing his leadership is uh, he taught me um, 
uh, a little bit of understanding and patience and an ability to be a better leader myself. So I'll give you kind of an example. I wore my member school board uh, identification badge. So we would vote for officers. So here's the real controversial issue we had. We change the feeder zone every year in Woodlands. So that was a mess. No one wanted to change high schools. Naming or changing any school, naming a school was a huge problem. And then the election of officers. So we would have, you can imagine having a divided board. I mean, you, you, I see all these unanimous votes. I love that. And I didn't appreciate it till after all the divided votes we had. So we elected everybody as officers. There's only two people that weren't elected as officers. And they were made members. And believe it or not, it was me and John Husbands. <laughs> so the two of us were... Yeah, but you've been on the board for years. I was brand new. I know that was even, <laughs> but that was even worse. So you, you all know John, so you can appreciate that. So, uh, so I know Don felt bad about it, and he he came to me and he said he wanted to be an honorary member, and we made that. So, Don, I've got a I've got a thank member. I got to thank you for your, I don't know your guidance, your leadership, what you've done to the district. I remember in meetings you were saying we were going to be an exemplary district and I said hey let's just shoot for the other level and see if we can make that and uh, and you did it and it's remarkable what you've done for the district so proudest accomplishment uh, is my association with you and thank you Kara for taking care of my Sydney and I had a child born on the, born on the school board and I had four that went through the district. Thank you Don Stockton. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you. Dr. Stockton, President Bush, members of the board, as well as the community audience, it's both a pleasure and an honor to speak this evening as a past board member and as one of Dr. Stockton's inaugural members of a team of eight. Much has been said and will be said regarding the legacy of Don Stockton serving CISD for the past 15 years. So many memories, so many accomplishments during the explosive growth of the district in student enrollment, schools, academic excellence, and outstanding teachers and administrators. Dr. Stockton is not perfect, but was at the time and is perfect for CISD. He understood to build an exemplary district. He needed the vision and the ability to communicate that vision while aligning his schools, the staff, administration, and the community towards a singular goal. Most importantly, he put kids first. All means all. During my almost 12-year tenure on the board, the activities are probably the most enjoyable moments were things Dr. Stockton implemented or influenced. For example, reading for a better life, field trip Friday, all of the schools inviting school members, school board members, to various programs or activities on their campuses and his involvement in the community boards showcasing the district and our students and teachers just to name a few. While it was never about him, it was all about him. His belief in the district, his faith and confidence in all that worked in the district from bus drivers, custodians, paras, teachers, administrators. His support of and concern for students and families in our district and community. You see, it was him. His leadership and 24-7 commitment mattered. Now, as he most deservedly charts a new course in his life, there are no words to aptly summarize my deep appreciation for his service. So a simple thank you will have to do. And remember, yes, it's a great day to be in CISD. <laughs> <laughs> I was dragging on a little bit. I apologize for that. But <laughs> following a couple lawyers. Um, you know what? This was a really good district even before Don was superintendent. The problem is nobody knew it. When when our when our CFO and CEO imploded or exploded, um, it was it was really good. 
We won all the awards that you're winning now. Prior to that, Don knows it, but nobody knew it. The press was a little hostile back in those days, and the former superintendent just didn't know how to bring it back to the community to tell everybody how good we really were. And so what Don did was he had all these, these things flying off in the air and brought it back down and then expanded it. And that's the most important thing I think that Don did is he took something that was already good and figured out a way to tell the story and then made it better. Now, I know some things about, actually, I'm going to talk. Karen, I apologize on this one. I'm going to go back a little bit further. Um, Don is from Elgin, Illinois. And Don was a high school All-American quarterback, went to Purdue, got hurt at Purdue. Sorry about that. Should have come to Houston, been a Houston Cougar, and everything would have been fine. <laughs> Diane and I got married in 1971, and I had already finished one year of optometry school down here, and she's finishing college. And we went to Pheasant Run, which is in St. Charles, Illinois, about 70 miles away from our hometown. It was a short uh, honeymoon because we were getting ready to move down here. And Don's mom and dad worked there. And so we, when we first met, Mr. and Mrs. Stockton, we, Diane and I were drawn to them because they're Northern Illinois people. They understand the farm communities that we're from, and nobody here really did. And so immediately we're going to like Don because, you know, he's one of them. And <laughs> if Mrs. Stockton was a wonderful, Don's mom, was a wonderful, wonderful woman, Earl was just absolutely a class act. My mother loved him. Um, Earl uh, landed at Normandy. He had he had quite, quite a war record, as some of you probably know. Uh, my dad did too. So it, again, it drew us to the Stocktons. Uh, Kara taught David, and he, you're his favorite. And I think that Don had Christy in about 16 years of high school in the different varieties of combinations of high schools that we had in junior highs back in those days. And um, so from a personal touch, you guys are amazing. And I'll never forget you. I'll never forget your mom and dad. Uh, they, were, they were really special. And Carrie, thanks for holding our hand throughout the explosion and implosion. It was a, it was a tough time, but Dr. Stockton, you're the superstar that you were uh, when you were at Purdue, and you're the one that made it happen. Thank you. Thank you, Joba. The former board is done. I think a few of the uh, current board have comments they would like to make. All right, I get to start it off. I, I, there's, there's probably not a whole lot more that can be said, uh, Dr. Stockton, but I, I would like to point out just a couple of things. It's been, uh, it's been very humbling for me to work with you and, and also for those of you who had the vision to, uh, to give him an opportunity to, to shine here. I would like to, to share with you the first time I ever met, met Dr. Stockton was several years ago, and you probably don't remember this, but because it wasn't a big deal for you, it was a big deal for me. <laughs> it was a big deal for you. <laughs> See, there he goes again. No, but it was, a, it was, it was years and years ago. Um, I was a, a young guy trying to make a mark in this community, and there was a, an event called Men Who Cook. Men Who Cook down in the woodlands, and I got put on a team with this, uh, with this uh, Dr. Stockton and, and my wife, who was a school teacher at the time, she said, that's a big deal. You're going to get to be with the superintendent. So, uh, so I, I was mixing me, and we were making whatever that dish was that we were supposed to be making, and I introduced myself, and I said, do I, do I call you Dr. Stockton? And he said, oh, no, no, it's fine. You can call me Don. And so we got real personal. He made, he made me feel like uh, you know I was kind of important. Well, the funny thing about this story is, uh, when we went to look at the list of people on, uh, on the teams, there was a misprint, and they had his name as Don Stockton, and they had my name as Dr. Skeeter Hubert. <laughs> <laughs> and when I saw that, I went to Dr. Stockton, and I said, you need to call me doctor. <laughs> 
And as it stands now, I've never been called that in my life. I kept that. I asked if I could keep that, and I still have it at home. <laughs> but um, I, I share that with you just to say that from that moment on, um, you have never changed. You've always been a very humble individual, giving time to anybody and everyone, no matter who they were, what they represented, and not knowing that someday we'll get to work together. And that was very impressive to me then, and it is impressive to me now. So thank you for being who you are. Thank you, Dr. Hubert. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Stockton, I'm going to read mine, and I'm not going to look at you, because if you do, I might cry. So I'm just going to read it. Thank you to all the former board members. Uh, thank you for your wisdom. Your leadership. Uh, Mel, thank you for changing your mind. <laughs> and Bruce, thank you for asking. Uh, Dr. Stockton has always called himself and the board the team of eight. It's been my privilege and honor to serve on this board for the past seven and a half years and to witness firsthand how Dr. Stockton makes others feel welcome. One night, I, on the night I won the election as a new board member, one of the first calls that I received was from Don Stockton, who wanted to welcome me and to make the transition easy for me. I thought it was a nice gesture, but I learned later this was just what Don Stockton does. Mm -hmm. Mahatma Gandhi is quoted as saying, relationships are based on four principles, respect, understanding, acceptance, and appreciation. I found that Dr. Don Stockton carries out these four principles every day and to everyone he comes into contact with. During my orientation as a board member, I learned that Dr. Stockton says all means all, meaning every student, every teacher, every administrator, and all support staff are to be respected, to be understood, to be accepted, and to be appreciated. I've seen on countless occasions how Dr. Stockton uh, makes sure that everyone from the person who cleans the schools to the bus drivers that carry students to and from school to anyone else connected with students uh, to, to help make their achievement are made to feel important and special. In the Holy Bible, Philippians 2, 3 says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility, value others above yourself. Dr. Stockton, you have taken this verse to the highest measure always making sure that others' self-esteem is lifted up. I've seen you in so many interactions with people. Make sure to show extreme value to others. You're a role model we can all learn from. You strive to make others better every day and in every way. I so much appreciate how at the beginning of each school year, uh, at teacher convocation, you have a word that is to inspire but is also directed for the entire year. A few years ago, kindness was the word you brought, and I could see how that entire year was better as everyone had a focus on being kind to others. Thank you for these reminders that help to make us all better. I also value how you promote higher learning for a lifetime. I appreciate how you and the Conroe ISD Education Foundation have helped to raise thousands and thousands of dollars to help support our district in furthering their own education and in welcoming past Conroe ISD graduates back as new teachers. You've added programs and new classes that benefit students and create successful future leaders. You've made sure that Conroe ISD has the best, the best staff, the best teachers, the best administrators, the best of everything it takes to make students successful in life, and the results are that Conroe ISD is one of the highest rated districts in Texas and in the nation because of you. Dr. Stockton, you have made Conroe ISD the example for other schools to follow. The Read for a Better Life program that begins at the start of each new school year has helped thousands and thousands of students to learn the joy of reading and to gain a desire to read more and to go farther than they ever thought possible or could have imagined. It starts at the top with leaders who support reading and I so very much love when you make sure that reading is modeled here at our board meeting each September. Thank you for making reading an important part of life. 
Today, there are so many successful Conroe ISD graduates who return to our district because of their great life experiences. They want to make sure their kids get to come and be a part of such a special district that you have played a major role in building. On a personal note, I would like to say publicly, thank you for being my friend, a mentor, a confidant, and for allowing me to be a part of your life. Don, you're a man of integrity, honor, and have a high sense of both morality and ethics. Maya Angelou is quoted as saying, do the best you can do until you know better. Then when you know better, do better. You, Don, have made all that is Conroe ISD better. Thank you for your more than 34 years of service to public education and for your 15 years as superintendent. I hope you enjoy your retirement, and because I'm already retired and have a new set of golf clubs, I'm available for tea times if you need to. <laughs> and Kara, thank you to you. Thank you for allowing Don to share his life with this community and for those that he loves. We appreciate your support and your support of Don. My friend, you'll be greatly missed. Thank you for all you do. Thank you. I don't know how you follow that up, but I'm going to try here. I thought I could freestyle this, but uh, I said I better take some notes just in case. Um, Dr. Stockton, on behalf, this will sound a little bit selfish, but on behalf of uh, my employees and uh, my family, we just like to say thank you. They like to say thank you. Um, just watching your lead and um, witnessing your integrity and just serving with you over the past six years has, has, has truly made me a better boss, a better leader, and a, and a better person in, in general. Um, I typically don't drink the Kool-Aid, as per se, but um, I've, I've watched you and your rock star status in the district, and I can honestly and truly say it's, it, it's warranted. It's truly deserved. And um, I consider you a mentor. I consider you a friend. And I just like to say thank you. And I like to share one story that you, you, you and I witnessed um, during Ambassador Awards. Uh, Dr. Stockton, I think we were at Burnham Woods somewhere, and we were in the foyer, and uh, they were about to buzz us in and whatnot, and the parent was there bringing the kids lunch. Um, some McDonald's, if I'm not mistaken. And the parent stopped Don, and Don had to pretend like he always does, pretend like he knows the parent. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, you are one of those deals. Hey, you are the you Don, you know this person. And then, so, the lady said, hey, Dr. Stockton, and um, so, hey, you, that kind of deal. And then uh, she said, you probably don't remember me. I said, okay, I'm going to see how this goes. She says, I thought this was going to be one of those deals where parents are expressing some grievance. And um, he said, you don't probably don't remember me, but when you were at principal at Knox Junior High, she said, um, I mean, it's a parent of a kid. She said, I was being bullied. And um, she said, it, it, it really impacted me. She said, but you took the time every day to walk me to my classroom. And you probably don't remember that, but she remembered it. And she said that she watched you go from principal to coach to superintendent to, to where you are today as superintendent for the last 16 years, 17, 15 years. But the impact that had on that person that I witnessed, and, I, and it's countless stories like that throughout the district, but I witnessed that one myself with you in that uh, vestibule of one of our schools, and that, that, that really solidified to me who you are uh, as a person. Not that I need any further validation, but that was really a, a very memorable moment. And if I, can, if I can leave that type of impact on just one person, um, Dr. Strachan, as you have done on so, so countless people, I will have feel like um, mission accomplished. So thank you for being, like I said, a mentor and a friend. Thank you for making me a better person, a better boss, a better leader. Um, just being who you are, Don, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to reiterate what Ray said about, you know, I knew it was going to be difficult. I look over there and all these, these people I've admired through the years and in y'all's service, and we thank y'all so much for that, and thank you for passing the baton on to us, and we just hope we can, we can honor that. Um, so what I want to just briefly, you know, I was thinking about Don, and uh, there was an article in the newspaper 
gosh, four or five years ago, and they asked on who his role model was, and it was George Bailey. And it, you guys may not get this unless you know the 1946 film, It's a Wonderful Life. If you have not seen It's a Wonderful Life, you need to watch it, especially <laughs> this Christmas. It's one of my favorites. But uh, uh, you know, I was thinking about the characteristics of George Bailey and the characteristics of Don Stockton. And you know, Don has demonstrated that, that decisiveness and leadership, just like George did when pulling Harry out of the ice. Uh, he's exemplified the, the empathy and the courage, just like uh, y'all remember Mr. Gower, the pharmacist, in that situation. Uh, you have done that. Uh, you know, Don is a uh, is dedicated, just like remember George and Mary. They're heading off on their honeymoon, and there's the the crash, and, and they they save the day with their savings. And uh, Don has that type of dedication and responsibility to this job, and uh, I've seen that over and over. Don is, is truly a servant leader. Uh, you know, George didn't go off fighting the war like Harry, who was the war hero. Uh, George stayed in his hometown and he fought the war there and did all those little things with all the people that just made a huge difference and impacted that community and, as we saw in the movie, impacted all kinds of lives. He was truly a servant leader, took the fall for Billy, Uncle Billy. Um, but. Uh, what I have seen in my six, seven years here is, uh, and I've seen ever since I've known you, is the same thing that George Bailey did in the movie, is where did George Bailey go for his strength? Where did he go for his guidance in, in the time of need? And he went to our Heavenly Father. And, you know, we can't talk about that much in, in this arena. However, you know, there's people that always point and talk about that. But then there's people who live that and that don't have to talk about it because that's their strength and their foundation. And that's Don Stockton. And so, you know, George Bailey's a good role model, but you have lived up to that. And of course, George Bailey had Mary Bailey, Donna Reed, <laughs> and was the rock. And Kara, you, Mary Bailey does not have anything on you. You have been the rock, and we just appreciate you so much. And uh, just thank both of you. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. <laughs> what a run, Dr. Stockton. What a run. Uh, this community has, uh, like no other, and uh, it needed a superintendent like no other. And he got one. Uh, I probably have the privilege of knowing you longer than any any other board member around, even though they served on the board before me, maybe. But you and I go back to the uh, baby presentation at First Baptist Church with our oldest, and uh, with your only and my oldest, and the nursery and Sunday school and such. And uh, I've known you a long time. And Don didn't become special when he became superintendent. Don was special before he was superintendent. And y'all know that as well as I do. Everything everybody knows, we're just boys in our heart today. Um, people are always asking me, how do you do that? John, it doesn't pay, it, you know, how, why do you serve on the board? And I always say, it's, it's an honor to serve on the school board. But trust me, I have met a many of other school board members that don't have the privilege of serving and having the honor of serving on the school board, okay? And that's because they don't have the leadership that we do. And, you know, it may be true. The seven of us may hire him every year, and y'all hired him originally, and so on and so forth. But let me tell you something. There's no question where the leadership came from, okay? Um, keeps us out of the ditch, keeps us aware. Uh, you know, I, I, I started trying to prepare, like somebody said earlier, uh, some notes, and, and I just, it's too easy to talk about Don. I'm not gonna ramble too long, but I am gonna say a couple of things. Um, because you, you were always keeping us uh, out in front of the issues. Uh, you worked hard for the transparency. We've heard that word several nights, several times tonight. Uh, I'm staring at Dr. Stewart where you put her out there and, 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 and made 
uh, you know, y'all talk about when you re rezone uh, districts, what an issue it was. Well, Don and Dr. Stewart, Dr. Hines have made it a, it's painless. It's painless. I'm a painless. Uh, Glad you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about it all of a sudden. You can laugh at me if you want to, but the last time we rezoned this district, uh, a district is this uh, on this board, there was a single person that spoke at that podium. Now, I rest my case. That may be true. Let me, let me, let me just uh, don't mean to argue with anybody, but it's been a pleasure, and it, it, and, and truly, uh, because Don was always exhibiting the leadership and the transparency and the ethics that he has, it has made it a privilege to serve this district. It's been an honor to watch you. Uh, I remember, I think it was 12 years ago, when, uh, you know, I've always complimented your picks for, for principal. You claim one of the most important things that you do. And uh, I'm sitting out here staring at, you like to call them superstars. I see you out there, keep smiling. You're a superstar. Yeah, and you, and you, and, and, and he hired you. And, and let me just say this. About 12 years ago, he, he said, watch this. And that's when he brought you home from Magnolia. And I say home because you belonged here all the time, okay? And uh, so the legacy lives on, the, uh, the right calls, the leadership, so on and so forth. So I, I just like to say that, you know, it hadn't always been easy. I mean, when you have... Not as easy as zoning. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like College Park. It's the most beautiful, it's one of the most beautiful campuses in the world. You know, somebody said it looked like University of Virginia. I wouldn't know I hadn't been there. But let me just say this. You know, only Bruce Tuff can vote against a, a beautiful campus design because it has a clock on it that's going to break one day. Okay? I mean, it hadn't always, it hadn't always been easy, okay? But, uh, but putting up with us and keeping us uh, in, in the right direction as a district and love, your love for children, we thank you for. Your brilliant leadership, we thank you for. And your exemplary service to this district, we thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Dr. Stockton, I have been on this board for the shortest amount of time of the people sitting up here, but I feel like I have been a part of this for many, many years, um, going back to PTO presidents, councils, and district level planning and decision making. Um, and one of the things I always admired through my many years of sitting on facility planning committees and attendance boundary committees was any time I had a question you have never said no when I've called and asked for a meeting to get clear on something. Dr. Hines and Dr. Knoll have never said no when I've called to ask for a meeting to get clarity on something. Darren Rice has never said no. We, every time we name a new principal, they stand up here and they say, thank you for taking a chance on me. And we see the leadership that you have placed in this district over the last 15 years, from the campus level to this building and they reflect the leader that took a chance on them. And they know that the superintendent is not going to say no when a parent calls or when a member of a committee calls, and they are going to follow the leader. And I have always admired that about this district. When I announced that I was running for this board, one of the local news media outlets interviewed me and asked me why I wanted to run from the board. Um, and my, uh, my response was, I want to be a part of that. I was so proud of the education that I received in Conroe ISD. I was so proud of the education that my children were receiving in Conroe ISD. I was so proud of the way that my mother was treated as an educator in this district. I was so proud of the way that my wife has been treated as an educator in this district. And I wanted to be a part of that. Um, over the last few months, I've had the privilege of working with other board members from around the state um, and every time I introduce myself as from Conroe ISD, I hold my head a little bit higher. Um, and as I think it was John said, there, there are a lot of, of um, board members around the state that can't say that. Um, and we are all honored to be able to hang our heads high when we say we're from Conroe ISD. 
Um, you have led this district. You have taken a chance on people that take a chance on children. And that's what it's about at the end of the day. Um, a very wise man who I'm really looking forward to working with in the coming years uh, <laughs> said several years ago, and I, and I like to use this every chance I get, that a, a strong community uh, has three pillars. Um, and that's a strong business uh, foundation, strong faith community, and a strong school district. Um, and we've heard praises of this school district tonight, but this entire community is better for the strength that you have given to this district. And to the previous board members, those of you who, who helped select Dr. Stockton to come into this position, those of you who worked through the difficult times in previous administrations, those of you who worked with Dr. Stockton to set this up for, for all of us, um, this is easy. Um, and it's because it's been because of whichever eight people have occupied these chairs over the last 15 years. And there's only one chair that has remained occupied by the same person. And that reflects where we are today. So thank you from the bottom of our heart for all you've done. Dr. Stockton, the reason why I wanted to give the former board and this current board the opportunity is because we do represent all of this community, all of the residents, all of the parents, all of the students. And if every single one of them could be here to say these same things, they would. Because you are that loved, you are that pillar for this district and it has been wonderful to watch we've heard many people speak tonight on the legacy that you're leaving from your tenure with cisd you changed the direction and the culture of this district and in the community you have been the face of our excellent district but your legacy goes far beyond the policies and the impact on our district's financial and academic standards Dr. Stockton, your legacy is in every teacher that has wanted and desired to come back to CISD as a product of this district, to give themselves to these students and to help them receive the same quality that they received. Your legacy is in every classroom where a child has felt or will feel cared for and like they could excel at the task at hand. Your legacy is in each hallway with every smile given or kind word spoken, because that's who you are and what you've given to each of us. You, sir, have made Connor ISD a wonderful place to work and a wonderful place environment for all of our kids to learn. Thank you for pouring your life into our district. Thank you for making all mean all, and it truly matter to every single educator, every single bus driver, paraprofessional, every single person involved in this district, <coughs> even our vendors, recognize that all means all because of you. Bottom line is, thank you for being you. We appreciate you. Thank you, Melanie. Item 9B, I would like to um, not do, but he has insisted. So, Dr. Stockton. I have time to um, have rebuttal. This is, uh, it's, it's humbling to sit here and very embarrassing. Um, I want to recognize my beautiful wife, Kara. Kara, would you please stand up? <laughs> Sweetheart, I'm glad you're here. I consider this a date. <laughs> so, we need to give her some time. <laughs> Maybe supersize. Maybe she needs to do the rebuttal. So thank you for everybody making that come true. Um, and anybody in education knows after a while that with a the spouse, they talk about going to a dance. It means they're going to the school to sponsor a dance, <laughs> to a play as a theater department, and so on and so forth. Um, but it's been a team effort, so thank you. 
You know, I was, I was talking to Sarah Blakelock, who's our director of communication, does such a wonderful job, um, that when I give this speech that we should have a pop-up that would come on the screen, it would be me saying, well, obviously I'm choked up right now, so. Uh, <laughs> but I'm going to try to work through it. Tonight, as you know, marks the last um, school board meeting of my tenure superintendent. Over 15 years ago, and you've heard variations of this story. <laughs> um, I sat here as interim superintendent on the first meeting, and it didn't go so well. Um, <laughs> you know, I think, I think at 1 o'clock we adjourned or something like that. Um, but I was really, really had no clue how to be a superintendent. Um, very little experience in what was happening. Um, but as a couple of you mentioned, um, Joby, Barbara, Ann, um, I had parents who taught me the difference between right and wrong. The parents who taught me fairness and my parents who taught me to have a good work ethic. And those things carry anybody uh, a long way. And I brought that as an interim superintendent um, wanting to do that because um, I didn't have a lot of experience as superintendent, and, but I, I had some great support with people in the district. Um, but I approached the interim superintendent with those skills or with those characteristics my parents instilled in me, all for the purpose of getting the district ready for the next superintendent. Um, I looked at an email recently that I sent out in April of 2003, and lot, a lot of you, many of you in, in the room today were in our district at that point, and it was from the interim superintendent just saying thank you to everyone in the school district for what you do, and that was, a, that was apparently the first email a superintendent ever sent out. Um, but I sent that out, and, and in the email I said, I'm going to do the very best I can so the transition's new, good for the new superintendent. <laughs> um, I didn't realize it was going to take me 15 years to do that. <laughs> But at the time, I, I couldn't imagine being a superintendent, like this shared over and over again. Um, it's such an awesome uh, position, awesome district. I couldn't imagine myself being a superintendent because I didn't have a lot of experience, and I certainly didn't want to let anybody down or let our district down. Um, so 15 years ago, with many of the people right here uh, mentoring me and encouraging me, I, I was named superintendent. and. Since that time, we've had hundreds of board meetings. That's, that's, I can't believe I'm saying that. There are um, hundreds of board meetings we've had, and that's an awesome experience to have. Um, next week, let me go back. Um, so people ask me, am I going to miss board meetings? And, <laughs> and the answer is no. No, no I'm not going to miss board meetings. Uh, I'm not. It's, there's a little bit of pressure that sits here, Dr. Null, a little, little pressure. Uh, but what I'm going to miss is the people that are involved. And that's, and that's what uh, is so important in life, the relationships that you have and, and um, the friendships that you have with, with others. Graduations start next week, if you can believe that. Graduations start next week. And, and I'll have the privilege of shaking graduates' hands. And over the last 15 years, I will have sh shook over 50,000 hands at graduation, um, and as interim superintendent in the very first graduation, I, I, I made the commitment that I wanted to shake everybody's hand when they graduate, and it's a little thing, but it's important, it was important for me to um, let students know how proud I uh, was of them. I wanted to, I want to especially thank the former Board of Trustee members today that are here and um, and the trustees that, that currently serve. I've had the honor of serving under, under trustees who always put children first, always put children first. And, and that's not true in all school districts. They get all kind of other things that take the focus away from children. But in our district, it doesn't matter where a child's from, it doesn't matter their background, it doesn't matter what they look like, what they believe in. Uh, we're going to do everything we can to support that child. And the board sets the tone for that. In, in uh, where you spend your money and where you spend your emphasis, and it's all through the district. And that's, that makes me so proud. Um, I appreciate board members so much because you've always put our employees very, very um, 
in, in high appreciation. You've been um, very kind to our employees. You went out of your way to thank people, and and that matters. It matters in life. Um, we we do ambassador awards, and Linda, that was that was your idea. That ambassador awards years ago. We do ambassador awards, and and we give out little plaques that don't cost very much money, um, but 14 years later, someone stops me and says, do you remember giving me that um, plaque? So it means a lot. Um, so thank you for making our employees feel valued. That goes a long way um, in, in people wanting to work in our school district. And they, and they talk about it. It's important. So thank you for that. Um, thank you for being outstanding community members. All of the trustees are prominent in the, in the communities, and um, that brings great recognition to our school district. And it makes me proud to serve with you, so thank you for that. Thank you for being good stewards of our taxpayers' money. Um, that's not easy to do. If it was easy, other people would be doing it. But um, that's not easy to do. So thank you for, for um, expecting that and supporting that and making hard decisions so those things come true. Um, and thank you on a personal note for challenging me and holding me to be accountable. You know, amongst all these stories were some very, very serious conversations about how do we get better. And as board members, you've driven that in the last 15 years. So thank you so much for that. Um, and above all, I thank you for your support and I thank you for your kindness. Uh, it, it's, it's greatly, greatly appreciated. You've served as my boss and you've served as my colleague. Um, you've gain my respect and you've become my friend. So thank you so much for all of that. At this time, I would like to introduce the former board members. I'd like to have you stand up and if you'll all hold your applause till um, I introduce each of you. So if you'll stand and remain standing, uh, Dr. Mel Brown, um, C.J. Haynes, Mr. Chris Irish, Mr. earlier made a, made a step out, uh, Mr. Gerald Irons. Mr. Gerald, Gerald, you look like you can still play. <laughs> yeah. I still don't want you ever mad at me, sir. Uh, Dr. Kaufman, Joby, would you please stand? Uh, Joe Michaels, uh, Dr. Ellen Moore, Ellen, thank you. Um, Jessica Powell, I don't think was able to make it today, but I did want to mention her name. Uh, Mrs. Linda Sasser, uh, Dr. Ann Snyder, thank you. Uh, Mr. Bruce Tuff, Mr. Bruce Tuff. Uh, Mrs. Barbara Watson, uh, where am I? And our, our current, I think I have all the former board members. Please holler at me if I can't see you. And our current board members, uh, Ms. Melanie Bush, Mr. Ray Sanders, please stand, I'm in charge now. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you gonna do, fire me at this point? <laughs> I just wanna know that you've said that a lot lately. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Dr. Hubert, if you'll stand, please. Uh, Dayton Williams, sir. Uh, Mr. Scott Kidd, Mr. John Husbands, and Mr. Scott Moore. And very uh, sincerely, and it's been said before, but thank you. Thank you very much. Would you please help me recognize our group? I'm not through yet. I've got a few more comments. <laughs> yeah. um, I've been blessed to work with such talented people, period, people. Uh, but those people are educators and support personnel in our schools and our school district. And, um, you, you know, it's, it's a really, it, I've told people this before, that every day I went to work, and I love the people I work with. They're great people and I love them and I love them. And they're so talented and I've learned so much. And it's, it's interesting because people tell me how nervous I make them. <laughs> and that, that hurts my heart that I make people nervous. But I want you to know how nervous you all make me because I want to always do what you need uh, to be successful. And I want to I want to be that person you think I am. So it's always made me a little nervous. Uh, but I've worked with so many special people. I can't possibly introduce all of you. There's there's not only the people in the boardroom tonight, but there's 
about 7,400 others of you <laughs> that are out there. But please know that you're my colleagues and you're my friends and you're, um, you're people that I've um, spent most of my life with. And, and I do want to take the moment. I'm going to leave the microphone. You can all hear me. I, um, we're always blessed to have special people in our school district. And, and tonight I want to recognize one of them. And, and this is a really a special accomplishment. Um, the, when people serve in our school district, it's really, um, they not only serve, but they give back to the community. And tonight I want to recognize somebody and present her with a 40 year pen. Dr. Kathy Sharper, would you please? <laughs> Still not done. Still not done. <laughs> <clears throat> um, but I, I, Kathy, thank you for your years and, and uh, wherever you are for your years. And there's so many special people. And I, I, I said a minute ago, I can't possibly recognize all of them. I would like to point out just a, just a couple folks who we started kind of in this, um, over the last 15, we started together. Carrie, thank you for your leadership. and. And all the um, spirited arguments we've had over the years. <laughs> you like the little sister I never had. Uh, it was my pleasure. <laughs> I know you took pleasure in it, but thank you, thank you, uh, Chris Hines. Thank you. You're you're like the brother I wish I had. Um, thank you for everything that you've done and making um, zoning easy. Pain. <laughs> Take more of the same. Yeah. Dr. Stewart, I know you're back there. Dr. Stewart, if you'll if you'll stand for me, please. Dr. Stewart's in the back row, so I can make her stand. Um, thank you for everything, Jean. Your your uh, your uh, love of my life. Thank you. No, I mean in in. in <laughs> uh, I think, as much as I love you, I think Carrie loves you more. <laughs> you guys are going to go on a trip together, apparently, sometime. Um, and, and Chief, your 41 years of service, um, that's worth an incredible round of applause. Thank you. So, um, and the community members that are here, I look, at, I look in the crowd right now, and there's some really special faces. and. Um, that, that we go back a long way. Um, we haven't changed much, but we go back a long way. But when I, when I run into your kids and they're middle-aged uh, adults now, um, I'm so proud that we raised them. Uh, so thank you for being here. You're, the community's been so kind to me, and I serve on these, I serve on a number of boards and, and different activities and projects over the years, and, and I am in such awe of the people that I serve with and I think, I think the whole meeting, I have to contribute something. And I have to contribute something. Every time I do, it's like, yes, I contributed something. Um, but, but the kindness of the community is, was never expected, but it was greatly appreciated always. Um, in retirement, I look forward to watching the district flourish um, and reach even greater success in the years to come. It's because all of you come together, and that is for the greater good of our children and our future. Um, I'll end with this. I've been asked many times if my career was a dream come true. And the answer is no. Um, not even a dream could have turned out like this. So with that, from the very bottom of my heart, I say thank you. On that note, do we have a motion to adjourn? I'll make the motion. <laughs> yeah, not allowed. I can't. So move. You're out of order. <laughs> <laughs> motion to adjourn. Motion second. second.
Thank you. We are adjourned. All right.